This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with Nahara. My name is Janet Borland. I am the director of the National Native American Human Resource Association. And for those for, with us for the first time, Nahara is a tribal-led nonprofit organization that is focused in HR profession and tribal leadership. And we are now on our 27th year of existence, continuing to advance and advocate for Native American tribes. Today, we proudly present Sherry Grabeau, Founder, Chief Executive Officer at Guided Choice. Sherry's vision for Guided Choice began long before the rise of the internet. After building some of the earliest 401k systems in the 80s, she was the first one to automate a 401k plan on a computer desktop. Sherry created Guided Choice as the first digital retirement advisor. Her focus on elevating consumer choice and control-led her to working at the highest levels of industry government, including chairmanship of the ERISA Advisory Council, frequent congressional testimony on fiduciary roles and lobbying for improved practices in the financial technology and health care fields. Always with a firm belief that independence is the only way to maintain the trust of those we assist. In today's session, save for an emergency or pay off high interest debt, in this presentation, Sherry will demonstrate that money has a way of demanding choices and today's dilemma is a crossroads of financial strategy. Do you prepare for the unexpected by building a safety net or do we seize the opportunity to tackle a high interest debt head on and free yourself from its grasp? That is the question. Today's session is being recorded and will be available um, this Friday on the Nahara YouTube channel. I please ask that you use the chat if you have any comments or any questions for Sherry and please keep yourself on mute. And um, with that being said, I would love to introduce to you our board president, Judith Wright. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to um, Nahara's Coffee Talk. We're always excited to provide you some, you know, valuable information and one that is um, one that I think everybody can use. You know, there's those who are in HR because they love people and there are those that are in finance because they love the financial world. And I am one that loves the people. So I am looking forward to this financial uh, information. So Sherry, thank you for joining us and I look forward to your presentation. Absolutely. And then I'll put together one more category, those of us who love people and the finance world. <laughs> I come out of HR and have HR and finance kind of blended, uh, which is an odd thing, I'm going to say, uh, especially being a woman in finance. Uh, that's really an odd thing. And then the woman in technology is a strange thing. So hopefully that actually adds value uh, to the conversation but i want to welcome each of you and really thank you for taking time out of your busy day i know august tends to be as judy and i were speaking about kind of the end of vacation season and everybody's heading back into uh, open enrollment season for not everyone as i learned from judy they're not so thankfully so thankfully it's not everyone but a lot of people are and the fall tends to be a busy day. So thank you for taking time out of your day. You know, our goal at Guided Choice has really always been to create solutions to help solve employees' financial issues. And the whole concept, ironically, came when I was in HR at Apple Computer. And what I saw, I, mean, I was managing benefits there, is that people were making decisions in what I considered to be silos. In other words, I would decide on the 401k, how much I should save. And, and the number one savings rate by far was in our plan, 6%, because we matched 50 cents on the dollar up to 6%. So people just defaulted to 6%. And when I watched the way they made decisions on their investments, it was very intriguing if they were on a manufacturing line, tended to be whatever the supervisor on the line was invested in. 
Uh, and when they made decisions on the ESPP plan or even our savings bond plan, you know, all of these decisions were made separately, never really looking at the whole picture. So I wrote a white paper and I didn't come from really a finance background per se, but I did have finance experience as well as technology experience, uh, but wrote the white paper on, on this particular product, Three Nickels, back in 1992 while in HR at Apple. So you're going to hear that heartbeat all throughout because really our goal is to help employees in the best way possible. And when, when you look at the data today, you know, depending on the study you use, Bank of America came out with a study and they said over 40% of employees wanted financial advice from their employers. Schwab just came out with a study and said over 90% of employees say they want financial uh, advice from their employers. And, you know, we're seeing data, you know, over and over coming out from, well, in particular, financial services firms. Uh, and I think probably the best place to get your data is directly from your own employees and from HR. But one of the other metrics that I think has given me the most concern has been PwC did a study. They found over 67% of American employees said that financial issues were the number one cause of stress in their life. And as we know in HR, when people have stress, it causes all sorts of other issues, you know, whether it be mental health issues or whether it's physical healthcare issues. Uh, so really to remove that stress is a key component of what we're attempting to do. Um, the last time I had coffee with you, I really was working at defining the problem. And today what I wanna do is give you an example of a solution uh, you know, this is a hot topic, especially given the SECURE Act and the whole you know, concept of emergency savings accounts or ESAs. Uh, but, you know, oftentimes, and I've worked in Washington, D.C. enough, and I know all of you can feel this pain. Uh, oftentimes, the legislators don't quite get it right. Uh, you know, we have lobbying organizations that kind of push concepts. And so, the, you know, kind of the, that lobbying entity with the most money tends to win. So I'm going to kind of go over this discussion from a little bit different perspective. You know, even if we look at, you know, free financial advice you can get on the web and then add to that, you know, what the legislators have done with Secure Act, it's not really to say we don't appreciate what they're trying to do and get people to save. We, we think saving is a great thing. Uh, obviously, it, it is what does provide a lot of people with financial security. But, you know, there may be better ways. And that's kind of the question that we're here to address. You know, and as we know, if we really follow the money, we can kind of find the root and the reason why certain things are passed in the, in the way that they are. So encouraging emergency savings, we would say is great, but we'd also look for who's making money off of it and who's doing better. Are your employees better off or are the financial services firms better off? And obviously our preference is employees. So when we look at, do we save or should we pay off high interest rate debt? We really need to consider five factors, uh, three factors, I'm sorry, three factors. Uh, the first is the debt interest rate. The next is the credit limit. And then last is income stability. And these are very personal to each individual. And we need to figure out kind of where we're at individually to find the best answer for us. So if we look at debt interest rate, you know, the higher the rate, the better off you're going to be if you pay down the debt. Um, you know, some of us have learned about compounding through our 401k, and it's a beautiful thing, that compound interest, and it, it helps our wealth accumulate. It helps our money work for us instead of us having to work for our money. But the opposite holds true too with credit. And with credit, when you have a high interest rate, you're accumulating debt upon debt, much like you would in the savings uh, equation, only now you're owing more, you're digging the hole deeper. So when we look at it, like in 2023, we would consider anything above 8% as a high interest rate. Uh, previously, though, it was at 5%. So what you can see is, depending on the economic conditions, you know, that that definition of a high interest rate will change. 
But the key is the higher your debt's interest rate above that threshold, the more urgent it is for you to pay it off. And we'll see why. Now, when we look at just kind of US averages, we know that there is a debt issue. I think we probably all can feel it, especially amongst our constituents and our employees. Now, 44% of participants use their, their loan from their 401k or a hardship withdrawal from their 401k to pay off debt. So that's a fairly high statistic. You've probably seen it in your loan requests or maybe your hardship withdrawal request. And when we take a look at the why, it makes a lot of sense. Our average US household um, owes $8,089 in credit card debt. And credit card debt is one of the highest interest rate debts. Right now it's averaging 23.5%. So that's significant. You know, we're trying to get people to save, but they can't really, if you look at it just due to that large household debt and the high interest rate on credit card debts. Like I said, it's digging the hole deeper, which makes it very challenging. And when you get into these types of economic uncertain times that we're in today, it makes it even harder on people because they feel the pressure more, even if they couldn't define it like I'm doing now. So if we take a look at the whole question, um, are employees better off you know, paying off their debt or are they better off paying into and saving into an emergency savings account, ESA? And if we take a look at what the world looks like today, they have the choice of paying off their credit card debt at 16 to 20%, like we saw the average is 23%. So we know that high side is much higher than 20%. Or earning you know, somewhere between 1% or 4% in a savings account. Well, just kind of intuitively, you can subtract, do the math. And we know that if employees pay off their debt, they're gonna be at least 15% better off, probably more so. So if we just look at an example, if we take the example of the current debt at 8,000, and this is the most amount of math we're gonna go through, but it, the numbers do kind of speak for themselves on this. So with the current debt of 8,000 at 23% interest rate, you've got a minimum payment of $170 a month. And then if the employee takes $50 and they use it to pay down the credit card, or they can put it into a savings account for the ESA, when we look at that example, if they took that $50 and paid off the credit card, they would pay it off in three years and seven months. And the total interest they will have paid out would be $3,293. But if they turn around and they try to save and then take the money out of the ESA to pay off the credit card, it would take them 13 years and five months to reach that $8,000 balance. So just looking at that, you know, it's pretty profound. That's a 10 year difference in time. So for your average employee, they very well may be better off using any extra money to pay off credit card debt versus saving in an ESA. But that's not the only metric that we use. And, and oftentimes, you know, again, with the funny thing with finance, you know, a lot of people think, well, people who are math oriented are better at finance and better at money. And to a certain degree, that's true. But ironically, there's emotion with money and many of them haven't been trained in how to deal with emotion. And that's where HR really can help people because the emotion component is oftentimes more important even than the math component. And we've seen it when we talk about and talk to employees about you know, whether to save in an emergency account or whether to pay off the credit card. Many of them intuitively want the emergency savings. You show them the numbers and you have to walk them through that emotional component to get them there. But another thing about credit is, you know, and I think we've probably all been through this paradox, uh, the more credit, the more you need credit, the less you can obtain it and the more it costs. So, Oftentimes, if you know you're gonna be taking out a large loan in the future, in the near future, maybe for a car or for a house or something of that nature, then to improve your credit score, as well as to reduce the cost of future borrowing, 
it may help you to pay off existing debt. So a lot of times, again, people don't realize that they have their credit card debt and then they go to buy a home and they can't access additional debt or the cost of that debt is higher. So that's another reason why you may want to pay off debt versus you know, waiting and saving because of this whole issue of your credit limit and the, we call it the credit paradox because it can be very annoying. When you need the money, you can't get it. When you don't need the money, you can get it and you can get it at a lower cost. Uh, we also are you know, fairly clear that not all interest rates are created equal, sadly. Uh, there's oftentimes a barrier, and we know it in the, those living in the majority native communities really have the hardest time getting credit and then typically end up paying more for credit. So this becomes an even harder issue for us because you're, you're talking about trying to get credit when you have to pay more because it's considered subprime and you need it more. So having tools available to employees to help kind of reduce that stress becomes actually fairly mission critical. And then the last factor is income stability. You know, if you think you're in danger of losing your job, or maybe the employer's not doing well. We really saw this during COVID, and I think this COVID highlighted so many different types of issues for people, which made it very difficult on a lot of individuals. Uh, so if you know that your job is more either volatile or you have that potential of losing it, then oftentimes you're better off saving for a buffer than paying off your high interest rate debt. So this would argue definitely for prioritizing an emergency fund. And generally speaking, you want three to six months worth of expenses in an emergency fund. Three months if you have a dual earning household and six months if you have a single earning household. That's actually fairly difficult for people to reach that objective. Uh, we know that well over 60% of Americans don't have $1,000 in a savings account. And so we know that these types of numbers of saving three to six months worth of expenses may seem extremely daunting. And so individuals have to take what we just call baby steps, you know, just take those baby steps of saving a little bit to get themselves to a place of comfort where they know if their income changes or they lose their job, they've got a buffer to help them. So that actually bodes very well for doing an emergency fund rather than paying off debt. So just in your own scenario, you can kind of see as we look at these things, it's not an all or nothing type of question. It's very personalized to each individual. And what makes sense for one may not make sense for another. And yes, there's the math component, but there's also the emotional component. And when we look at options for that ESA, um, some of our favorite, we love value-based investing. So we love it when people can put their money into organizations whereby they're the owners of those organizations. And th the benefit of that is because obviously they're going to be investing in doing things according to your values, which we, we do consider to be one of the imperatives of that emotional component of investing. So when we look at the 17 that are American, Alaskan, Native-owned banks, those are options for ESAs, for employers, to really partner with the community and keep the money in the community, valuing everyone in the community. So they can, people, individuals, you know, as you set it up as an HR benefit, they can use an existing account that they have uh, oftentimes, or they can open up new accounts. Oftentimes today, I-bonds have been fairly popular because they keep up with the rate of inflation or, again, choosing a financial services firm, a bank, a local bank uh, that you can use to set up emergency savings accounts so that employees have that done right through payroll deduction, just like 401k. It's the easiest way for individuals to save. So when we look at the the whole issue of the savings and kind of, I would say, the overall economic issues. We see 69% of Native Americans saying inflation severely is affecting their lives. 
we're seeing those numbers across the board uh, for most people, unless they're in you know high income communities, most people are getting impacted by inflation and they're feeling that and they don't know what to do and how to respond to inflation. And these are all the types of things that are adding to the employee stress. Makes it very difficult for employees to navigate through these. If we just look at this one, I would call it you know, relatively simple uh, example of do I save for an emergency or do I pay off high interest debt? As you might have discovered, just looking at these three factors, it's not necessarily intuitive. It, it doesn't necessarily always, the right answer for you might not necessarily be the one that feels the best. And so I know for us, we've had our financial coaches trained now, not just in the math, because math has one component of it, but also in the emotion of it. And we've also built so much flexibility into tools, and that's really a necessity for individuals to be able to change priorities, to be able to say, okay, maybe emergency savings is a higher priority right now than paying off debt, but you could also take a look and flip those and see what's the impact to me. Am I better off if I'm paying off debt or am I better off if I have my emergency savings? Um, so just even one simple question isn't very simple for our average employees. Um, probably not even very simple for us. It's not even necessarily simple for me. And then add to that other complexities like saving for retirement and buying a car and inflation. And it becomes very complex very fast, unfortunately. So what does it mean? It really means that there is no universally correct answer. So I know Secure Act came out and they you know, created ESAs, the employee savings accounts, might appear to be a great solution. And yet you really need to take into account multiple factors to get to the best solution. Otherwise, what's happening is we default into something like a 401k, for example. And as you've seen, we end up with a high number of loans and hardships just so people can live in the day to day. So it becomes more critical, I think, in today's world as we are, I would say, more complex uh, and hit with more unique things on the HR side. For example, the pandemic. Uh, for example, what we were just talking about with all the fires and you know, obviously all sorts of natural disasters that are hitting our communities. Uh, we have to be able to respond in ways that really help individuals at where they're at today. And so education obviously becomes imperative. But what we're also seeing with education is most people can only consume the education at the point in time when it's important to them. Uh, it's hard to teach people, for example, how to buy a car when they're not in the process of buying a car. But when they're in the process of buying a car, we actually get great mind share and we can teach them about buying a car. So a lot of, I think the success of HR is really gonna be around teaching people about what they want to know when they need to know it uh, versus you know, trying to educate them in totality. It's just almost becoming overwhelming for people to consume. So that's really what we've been trying to do more and more is build tools that enable employees to get the answers for themselves uh, whether it's education that they want and they want to be a do-it-yourselfer, uh, which we think is a fabulous thing, or whether they want advice and they want help or a coach, uh, whatever that looks like, it has to be really customized to the organization as well as to the individual. Um, a lot of the, the solutions um, that we are seeing are, I would call more blanket solutions that might work for some, but won't necessarily work at all. And so individualization or personalization becomes mission critical. So I want to open it up for questions. And I am having a hard time with my technology, so I'm going to end the show so that I can see you all. And open it up for questions. Do we have questions either through chat or through 
I don't know if we can unmute. Hi, Sherry Tal here. Okay, Hi, great, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Look forward to seeing you at the conference uh, next month, I believe, right? Um, yeah, my I question, think you'll see some of them. Some of your team? Some of awesome. our team, but I, I don't think I'm there yet. Well, thank you for being here today. Um, my question is how do we take this great information? Um, because I know the tribe I just recently left, um, 2,000 employees, um, all, not all, but a lot asking for this kind of information. What do you recommend for us in the HR world and training development areas to transition, transfer this to the workplace? Um, because this is something that needs to be in front of the employees. So either does your organization do that um, with employees or do you have a train the trainer? Do we have permission to use this information? I know that's a loaded question, three questions in one, but what are your general <laughs> thoughts? Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, you know, our, really, it's a great question. I love it. And it is, it's loaded in, to me, the optimal way. Uh, because in the way we do things, we are very, um, I would say, personalized and customized. Uh, it's, a, it's a funny thing in that, you know, technology historically, I think, has been somewhat restrictive. And if you customize, it's very high cost. And so most people don't customize. Uh, what we did is we really built our technology to be very customizable. Uh, so in our organization, to help you, we, we can do multiple things. One is obviously the education, and we do have an app. So employees literally can carry it around in their pocket. Uh, the Three Nickels app, we just call it the um, financial advisor in your pocket. And it can, you know, give you real time information. So you're going to buy a car, you, do, you just click on the tools and you can use those tools to help you buy a car and you'll be educated. Uh, because again, point in time is so cool. Because if you think about it today, we make hundreds of financial decisions, hundreds. It's overwhelming. Uh, the average the average employee can't consume it. I can't consume it, and I know this stuff, so I feel for people who it's a foreign language to. Uh, so it's multiple ways. One is you know a customizable library that you you can use if you want to train the trainer. We're perfectly fine with that. Um, second is we can do it. We have financial coaches and retirement coaches. Some entities we see just want to limit it to retirement. Uh, planning. Other entities want full financial wellness and planning. So we have financial coaches, and as I described, they're trained not only in the math, but also the emotion, because emotion is so important and critical when it comes to finances. Uh, so we have the tools available uh, in in the manner that works best for your organization. And I can tell you every organization out there is different. Uh, even when there's a lot of similarities, there's also differences. Uh, so either way, does that answer your question? It does, Sherry, thanks. Yeah, I think the app, um, I would be interested in more information on that, whether that's through Janet pushing that out or you wanna put it in the chat box as to how to follow up on that with you. I'm sure you'll end with your contact info, if that's okay. But yeah, you you address the, the question very well. Thank you. Um, I, I think that's, that's a big deal in our HR and finance teams. As Judy said, we have our finance folks, our HR folks. We work well together, typically tribally, but um, I don't think we come together well enough in this kind of education for our employees. So Dan, thanks for the support today. Absolutely. I, I, know, I know it's hard all the way around. Um, you know, I've been there. I've been in your shoes. It's it's not an easy uh, it's not an easy subject to tackle. And there's you know well we've found there's numerous reasons for it. Employees say they want it, and I did put in the chat uh, Jim's email address so you can email him and he can get you out information. Um, there it's one of these topics. It's a strange topic, and I would say. It, Close, most closely mirrors mental health, um, I would say, as far as, and it's funny because there's so much overlap between mental health, health and finances. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those subjects that almost people are afraid to talk about. And then sadly, because we don't talk about it, we don't get educated in it. 
we're not familiar with it. So when it hits us, we're almost like we're in shock. And, you know, as, as we know from mental health and neuroscience, that kind of puts us in that fight, fight or flee, freeze, hopefully <laughs> when we're running, but it's that fight, 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 flight, or freeze. And it's the freeze we find most common with finances. And, you know, I know all of you can relate because at Apple, one of the things I was doing when I was automating HR, it's a lot of the HR functions, not HR itself. Um, we would go through and we would map out decision points and action steps for employees. Just in the new employee orientation, we did that. And what we found is people had over 76 decision points and it was more than like 35 action steps. Well, decision points are hard enough for people, but every decision point you would get fallout and then for an action step, it, you get more fallout. Uh, because again, people get overwhelmed. So when I listed the statistic earlier in our 401k plan, the number one savings rate was 6% because that's what we matched up to. Well, that actually holds true across the country pretty much. Uh, that's the number one savings rate is whatever you match up to, which may or may not have any relevance to whether or not a person can get to retirement. But because I have to make so many decisions when I'm a new employee, I just have to go to the default. I have to do something easy. And so that's what we do. And then we get stuck there. But that might not be the best answer for us. And so that's why I, I say over and over, it is math and emotion. Um, they have to go together because... I'm, if I'm overwhelmed, I, it, math won't, won't, won't sink in at all. Math is on the left side of the brain and my emotions in that are on the right side. And my, you know, flight fighter freeze is in the middle. Uh, you can only have one third at a time. So we really did, when we took a look at our education and the app and the way we've done things, really had to take into account the behavioral aspects of finance and individuals and give people flexibility. So I see a raised hand, Sunshine. Hi, can you hear me? On. I can now. Okay, yeah, I can hear you guys. I had to sign back in. Um, okay, so how do we do the compound interest thing? Um, I haven't done that before. Can you explain like how to go about that? Yeah, compounding is one of those really interesting things. And I mean, if you want to figure it out for yourself um, personally, uh, then I'd recommend download the Three Nickels app. And we have all sorts of tools in there, both from the debt side as well as from the saving side. So you can see the way that it works either way. And uh, the tool is free, although right now we're in the midst of, uh, I guess you could call it, battling it out with the app stores. <laughs> Right now, they force you to kind of pay for a free version of the tool for 30 days. Um, well, you don't pay for the free version, actually. You have to set it up, like a credit card, set it up as if it, you're going to pay. Uh, you have 30 days to use it for free, and then if you don't cancel, it type of thing. Unfortunately, we just lost Sunshine, I think. Hopefully, she's back in. Um, but with the, the tools, you could actually see the advice. Uh, for 30 days and then just cancel it so you don't get charged. Uh, but we also have a free version. After 30 days, if you cancel it, it converts to the free version. And that gives you all sorts of tools uh, that do enable you to see the impact of compounding from a debt perspective. Um, because what happens with debt is, let's say I owe $10,000. If I owe $10,000 and I'm going to make it relatively simple at 10%, that means I'm, I owe another $1,000 of interest on my 10000 Now, most payments are not structured to always pay off the interest right away. So now they're not paying anything. If it's 10000 now by the end of the year, it's $11,000 that I owe. Uh, and now I'm going to pay 10% on 11000 So it would accumulate more, you know, to the amount of eleven thousand well actually now it's twelve thousand one hundred and so it's going to keep going up and going up when we make our payments especially a minimum payment a minimum payment is only structured to pay off four percent at a time in a credit card 
so what ends up happening is you're accumulating top of your interest. So you've got your principal, the amount that you've borrowed, your interest, and you're accumulating on that over time. So you end up having to pay off a whole lot more. Well, that's on the credit card side. That same power works when you're saving your money. When you save your money and I save $10,000 and I earn $1,000 in 10% interest, then I'm at $11,000 by the next year. And then I'm at, you know, 11,000, I mean, 11,100 and it just keeps going up. The power of compounding is absolutely incredible, but with debt, it digs the hole deeper and with savings, it makes the mountain greater. So if you just think of it like that, with credit, I'm going to be digging my hole deeper, and when I save, I'm going to make my matter. That's how long. But the tool will give you specific. Great question. Any others about this topic or any other topic related kind of to finance and HR? I'm more than happy to try to address if I have the answers. Mary, I don't have a question. This is Judy Wright, um, but I just wanted to share what a, a great um, presentation you you had. Um, just some of the, um, I'm going to call them common sense uh, tactics that you have. Um, <laughs> you just clarified them very easily. And for someone like me who doesn't have a a very finance uh, finance uh, uh, mindset, I'm going to say. Um, it's it's really important to be able to clearly understand it. And this is actually information. Not only do, can we give it to our employees, but also to our families and children. And so, you know, I just want to thank you for for your presentation today. Absolutely, thank you. I know, you know, it's sad to me. I guess one of the things that I discovered when I was in HR because I was in the same boat. Um, is everyone. I mean, I wasn't really a finance person, although 401k came under my purview, so I ended up having to you know, learn it. Um, but, you know, when you when you look at a, this subject, I kind of look at it as there's a lot of confusion. And it, gosh, we, we, we just kind of for fun at times, we'll go, I mean, I don't know if it's really fun, but <laughs> one of our guys who writes a lot of our material, you know, he'll go out on the web and he'll just search, you know, what you know, what information you can get on the web about a subject. And what we find is there's just a lot of confusion. You know, is the stock market going to crash tomorrow and the economy fall apart or is the economy going to do well? I mean, you'll find people on both sides of the equation. And so it creates a lot of confusion. When you add to that the number of products available, I mean, just mutual funds. I mean, there's well over 10,000 mutual funds. How, do, how does anybody sort through that? Uh, and, you know, we, we kind of have our own theory here that financial services, they want to make it tough so that they can sell you product. Uh, and, and our whole way of thinking is let's make it simple so you become a buyer instead of somebody who sold something you don't necessarily meet, need. And whether that, that seller of whatever comes through the government legislation or whether it comes through... Uh, you know, just confusion. We just want to make sure that you can sort through it all. That's our objective, is to just enable you to sort through the chaos almost. Um, when I think about it all, it's daunting. And Sherry, I'm just going to tell here again. I'm just going to add on briefly that, you know, having a 23 year old son that's gone through a typical public education and college, this is not. Um, unless you take a business course of basics, um, you don't learn this. And so for our employment base coming in, especially our younger employees, younger workforce, but it's all ages, all demographics, to have this information by us, the tribal employer, shows we care. So again, just connecting yeah. your great statement of math and emotion, because we care, we're going to have these education sessions. We're gonna provide alternatives. Um, and my other comment, just briefly, and I see a lot of colleagues, people I know on, on, on the call today, many of them do this, some of us may not, but I find having a total reward statement for employees, not just annually, but possibly even yeah. quarterly, to show what does it look like in a 401k, even if they don't have 401k, give them an example at the bottom of that statement saying, if you would have saved, if you would have contributed, 
during this time frame, you could have, you may have um, compounded and earned this amount of money. Um, and that's just showing that we care and providing this um, percentage of 401k contribution or participation for most tribes is very low um, because we do live paycheck to paycheck. That's very common. Um, but what is that longer term? And so again, this presentation is important. I'm, I'm putting my mind, you know, how does Nahara help get this out from, from the HR perspective to all employees? So um, again, Sherry, thanks today. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. You you nailed it. That total rewards is huge. You know, we oftentimes when we do this um, and we roll it out. In fact, right now we're uh, we're rolling it out in the city of Reno, Nevada, kind of throughout, and we're partnering with the tribes, with uh, public sector, with U University of Nevada at Reno, with the employers, uh, with education. Uh, because we really do believe in, in just the same way we believe it for the nations. We believe it, that you can change one person at a time and you can get people off of that paycheck to paycheck. And we see it as more imperative in places that have been ignored, quite frankly. They're ignored in legislation. They're ignored in education. Uh, and these are tools that we believe anybody can use, and you really can begin to change your, your nations one person at a time. Uh, we've seen it, and we have heard from employers over and over those total reward statements and statements that we've done with regards to like retirement readiness, which oftentimes gets combined like you described with total rewards, is oftentimes the most valued communication that they receive. They, employees do like to see that. So thank you, incredible input. That's, I think everybody should be doing that. Sherry, it, this is yeah. Janet. Um, wanted to ask, would you be able to share a copy of your presentation? Do we um, email you or Absolutely. Jim? Yep, just email Jim, the email address I put in there, but I'll put it in again, and he can share it. And feel free, we don't, um, we provide so much information for free. Like I said, even on the app, there's a free version of the app, and we can make it available to nations, the free version, um, that we have so much available for free because really it is our heartbeat to get people to financial freedom. So yes. thankfully, thankfully, we are thankful for technology because thankfully through technology, we were able to do that. We're able to really reduce down our costs enough that we can provide you with a boatload of information for free. But it's organized in a way, like I said, it, it, there's 12 different subject matter per se. And individuals can access the tools and the information when they need it versus um, you're trying to take all this in. Um, I think Cal talked about it earlier. You'd need a college course. And pretty much you'd need a, probably more than one. Uh, so having it in your pocket, you know, on an app, on your phone, makes it very simple. Do it when you need it. You know, you'll have everything you, know, you need, even in the free tool. I mean, we just had multiple people comment to us because they purchased tones and they use the free tool because it, uh, gave them all the, the information that they needed to know about buying their first home. So, yeah, it's got a lot of power to it, and you can have it customized to the tribe. This is great. Well, I downloaded uh, my app. Um, this is a wonderful app, and um, it's wonderful to have a tool like you said, in your pocket, um, we're always very busy. And at times it can be, you know, I can, I, I would, I sometimes can be embarrassed and it's nice to have just the privacy to get that information that you need. So thank yeah. you for creating such a wonderful app. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. I mean, we appreciate that. And we, we just really, again, I mean, I can't express it enough, although you'll see, you'll see our heartbeat, even with the free tool, uh, is really to help everyone. Uh, and obviously the app um, has kind of a, a cachet for the kids. The kids like the, the app and the mobile format 
far better. Uh, so we've been able to engage even down to uh, middle schoolers, which we never anticipated. So we wow. are working on a version for the youth uh, because we didn't realize the interest that they'd have in the app. Uh, but we're doing it more like a game for the youth. Wonderful. That's wonderful. And um, for those who are on the call, um, Sherry's team is going to be at our 27th <sighs> annual conference at Gila River. And please stop by, talk to them, look at the app. They are just such a resource. Um, so Sherry, thank you once again for this incredible information that you had provided today. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you all for your time. I know this is kind of the, the rest before the storm. So I appreciate you taking time. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for everyone that joined. And we'll see you at the conference in a couple of weeks. Yep. Sounds great. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye now.